welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. Today I'm here with scrapbook.com and I'm going to be showing you some of their new exclusive lines of stamps they've designed and we'll be creating a fun project with a different use for stamps that maybe you would just use on the back of a card or insert stamps. So I'm just going to show you another way to stretch your supplies. So let's get started. <laughs> So scrapbook.com sent me two of their new stamp sets. This one is all about handmade by just for you, handcrafted, created. There's also a really nice to or from you can use on a gift tag too. And there's a smaller stamp here as well that's another handmade by paper ink love made with love just for you so really lovely stamps that traditionally we would just put on the back of our projects but I'm going to show you something a little bit different so here I have a piece of watercolor paper except I'm actually going to use the reverse of the watercolor paper so this is my trick um, for when I want to use something with water in it obviously watercolor paper is designed as a heavy weight cardstock to take lots of things you throw at it but it usually has that texture on the front whereas if you use the back it's nice and smooth and doesn't have that texture but you still get that nice heavy weight and then I'm going to use some of my Nuvo aqua pens and I'm going to squeeze this off to the side because I don't want a big puddle on my um, piece here so I'm going to kind of do just a watercolor wash background I'm going to do blue in one corner pink in the other and then I'm going to do the purple into the middle so these are have a real brush in them they have watercolor already in them too so you can just go straight in and you can also you can see how I'm just putting a little dot on the side here you can just use those dots and then you can mix colors you can use any paintbrush you like but I'm just using some of these really fun colors and I will overlap in a second too but I really want a nice streaky kind of look to it so I've used the pink is called soft rose so let me just kind of and because they're a water-based pigment they will reactivate when you put the pen back over it again the purple was called uh, Lilac Blossom and now I'm going to use the blue which is called Clear Water. Now these come in a pack of three so you can see I'm just kind of going into the middle and just putting it out a little bit as well. So if you want to lighten it, so that particularly that middle piece, I would just like to lighten that slightly. I'm going to grab a uh, Nouveau Light Mist bottle and I'm going to particularly spray that middle bit and I'm going to take some kitchen towel and I'm going to lighten it up. Now you may wonder why I want to lighten it is because I'm going to stamp over the top so I want a really nice light colour underneath and because this is a water based pigment I can spray it and reactivate it as many times as I would like. Every time I add water it's going to reactivate but you can see here how I'm now getting a really lovely watercolour pastel background. Let's just spray this corner a little bit more. So you can see there, it's like creating your own designer paper and I'm going to just wipe up this pigment I put on the side there too. And now we're going to start stamping. So I have one of the scrapbook.com acrylic blocks and I have their own range of ink. This one says Umbrella, which used to be their own brand. They now just say scrapbook.com, but this is their own black dye ink. I want to make sure that this is super dry first of all. So I'm just gonna use my Ranger heat tool here just to make sure this is dry. Um, I want to make sure it's dry because this is a dye ink, it's going to react with water. If I had used a solvent or hybrid based ink, I wouldn't have to worry as much um, with a hybrid and with a solvent you wouldn't have to worry at all because only like reacts with like. 
So um, if you're using anything water-based, make sure it's thoroughly dry before you apply your ink. If you want to stamp something and colour it in using your Nuvo Aquaflows, use the Nuvo Hybrid Black or any hybrid black ink or a solvent-based black ink. Um, otherwise it will react and you'll notice I keep turning mine backwards and forwards. The reason I'm doing that is you want to dry out both sides of the paper, it will speed up the process, it will also make sure you have a flatter piece of cardstock. So every time I turn it around it gets flatter and uh, stops curling up on one of those sides. If you have a piece that is too curly and it keeps just kind of coming up on the edges, pop it through your die cutter, just regular plates, no dies in there and you'll find that works perfectly. So I am going to now pick off all of the stamps that I want. So I'm using anything that does not require a filling in. So I've got hello, created by you, love you, just for you, by me, for you, etc., etc. So I'm just going to make a big pile of stamps here. I want to make sure that I don't accidentally use um, things like to and from, made by, um, I will keep that little heart to the side to fill in any gaps. Again, I'm going to use the same here. So, not the handmade by, but we're going to go just for you, handmade for you, paper ink love made with love. Okay, so when I'm using a large amount of stamps, the other thing that I do is I grab a piece of kitchen towel. And as I've used a stamp, I just pop it on the kitchen towel ready to be cleaned later. So I'm going to start out with my stamps. I'm not going to use them in any particular order at this stage. And I'm going to start in a corner like this. And then I'm just going to peel them off, pop them on my um, kitchen towel, pick up the next one. And I'm going to turn them in different directions as well like this. Now whenever I use a photopolymer stamp, particularly a words or letters, um, I have a tip for you to keep them straight. Pop them down whatever surface you're using. I like to stamp on a glass uh, mat, the Tim Holtz one, um, and then pick it up with your acrylic block. That way you'll have a nice straight sentiment and it will make your life really, really easy. So we're just going to keep covering this up chance to say it loud your secrets kept you pushing down disavow when you was knocking on your door nobody got in now when you're screaming for a hand nobody's listening to the bitter end and it's on repeat echo wanna cut it out the tide is turning back at you when you were snacking on your door nobody got in but when you're screaming for a hand nobody's listening to mount up our card. Really fun idea I've got for you. So uh, we're going to stamp our sentiment on this Ulta New uh, tab. I stamped this piece out and then cut it out using the coordinating dies. And of course you can make tabs. I cut my tab a little bit short because I just want it to tuck behind my card. But I'm going to use the Love You that comes in those scrapbook.com sets because it has a nice large space in here so you can pretty much stamp anything you would like on there and so whilst that's just drying for a second we're going to trim these pieces down so my black piece this is lawn fawn jet black cardstock really nice quality stub 
cardstock that you can get at scrapbook.com. I'm chopping this down using the Tim Holtz trimmer. This trimmer is awesome because you can fit a piece of eight and a half by 11 through it. Uh, this opening here is eight and a half inches, but it's still a really nice compact piece here. And then we're gonna trim our watercolor piece down. So I'm gonna trim a little bit off each side until I get to the size I want to get to. So uh, width wise, you want it to be three and three quarters. And so I'm just going to trim it along there and trim the rest off this side. So I always have my pieces um, cut down a little bit bigger than card front size because when you buy the pads of watercolor paper, they're already a little bit larger. And um, by having it cut a little bit bigger than the eight and a half by 11, which is what I have it quartered down to, it means that when I'm using a piece of masking paper, masking tape, I can put it on the edge and I know I'm gonna trim that piece off so I don't have to worry about not having someone, something on that edge. And what it means now is I have a really nice matted piece of cardstock and here I have this really fun design for my background. So now I'm ready to add some more tape to the back of this, ready to put it down. This is the scrapbook.com tape runner. And so I'm going to line this up and stick it down. Now I'm going to add my towed piece and I'm going to fold along that top piece and I'm going to use a bone folder to just firm that piece down here, like so. And now I'm going to add some more of that scrapbook.com adhesive to both sides of my tab. And we're then going to pop our tab over. And I'm lining these straight pieces of the tab up with my background. So this is going to stick out slightly. Um, you could, of course, if you're going to mail it in an envelope, you could put it all the way in and then it's going to fit perfectly. But I have a recipient in mind who does not need this mailing, so I'm not going to worry about that for this one because it's going to go with a gift, like so. And for my uh, card base, I'm using some of the scrapbook.com Nina Solar White Blank note cards. So these are half a piece of eight and a half by 11. They come pre-cut and pre-scored. So all you have to do is fold in half, match the two corners up, and then just firm it up with a bone folder or with your finger. So the other thing I am going to do is I'm going to stamp on the back of my card. And I'm going to do that before I stick my card front on, just in case I make a mistake. So that makes it nice and easy. So I'm gonna use the handmade by, again, same dye ink. And I'm going to lay my card out flat. I'm actually going to do it this way up because I have a little smudge that I want to cover up there. So I'm gonna lay my card flat. Now when you're stamping on a card base or matting a layer on a card base, lay your card flat. You're gonna get a much better stamp or mount because your card is gonna be completely flat. If it's together, it has that little bounce to it and you'll find it much, much harder to do that. So I'm gonna stamp that on there. Handcrafted by and then I'm just writing, this is a fine liner pen. And you can probably hear Craig sneezing as well, just for you. And then, I'm going to stick this on here. I'm gonna be a little bit careful just because of that back piece I've just written on. But here is your finished card. So a really fun way to use the stamps that you normally might just use for sentiment, or you may use them on the back of your card, but you can use them and turn them into an awesome background. And I just love how this little tab sets your card off perfectly. Thank you so much for joining me here today with these goodies from scrapbook.com. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description and hit that uh, like button or thumbs up. And don't forget to uh, click the subscribe button so that you come back to Hedgehog Hollow. And if you stamp that bell, you'll also get notifications anytime we have a new video for you as well. Don't forget to check out those links and leave us a comment with your favorite stamp set from the new scrapbook.com collection. And we'll see you again very soon. Happy stamping. Bye.